between me and my husband, we have 15 nephews and nieces. That's right. Our oldest nephew just graduated from university, whilst our youngest niece hasn't turned one yet. Being a cool auntie for so many years, I was curious, how can we contribute to raising happy children and how kids impact our perception of happiness, whether we are parents or otherwise? It is interesting to know that research is quite surprising in the field of happiness and parenthood. Even though we may hear parents referring to their children as their pride and joy, Research tells a slightly different story. Having kids doesn't necessarily make people happier, or at least not in the way that we would expect. To understand more, I invited Kevin Maguire, a writer who set up The New Fatherhood, a weekly newsletter on modern parenthood, providing an open and honest conversation between community of dads. I was curious to find out what his readers' perspective is on kids and happiness. I'm your host, Claudia Mitura, work psychologist and learning and development specialist, and this is End Happiness, a quest to explore that bold question of what makes us happy. If you would like to access more resources on happiness, remember to sign up to our monthly pod letter. Just visit endhappiness.co.uk or follow the link provided in the episode notes on the podcast platforms. With no further ado, welcome to Kids and Happiness with Kevin Maguire. How to raise happy children. Kevin, big, big welcome to And Happiness. Lovely to see you today. Hello, very nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Kevin, we are going to be looking into very big, very interesting topic of kids and happiness. I mean, really interesting from so many different perspectives, because I guess depending at which stage in life we are in, uh, we might be considering to have kids, we might be deciding not to have kids, we might be already having kids and going through that experience, or we might be contributing to raising other people's children through our work or being happy aunties, uncles, grandparents, whatever it is. So let's start with a maybe simple, but I think really important question. From your readers, from your subscribers to the new fatherhood, what is the impact of kids on happiness? The way that I like to think about it is, of course, it's absolutely possible to be happy without children. And it is 100%. There are a lot of people, we were, and we were very happy before we had children. And there are lots of people who, but there are lots of people who have children and are happy. There are lots of people who don't have children and are very happy. There's lots of unhappy people with and without kids. So it's not that, you know, having a kid will take you from being unhappy to happy or the opposite, take you from being happy to unhappy. Something that I have found is it offers a different dimension to what happiness is. I think what happens is that it unlocks new ways to be happy and it also unlocks way, new ways to be unhappy. <laughs> it's true. And it's- okay, so can you give us some specific maybe examples about this? How do kids redefine our definition of happiness? So you're saying that it's not necessary that they're taking us from unhappy to happy or vice versa, from happy to unhappy, but they kind of maybe unlock uh, different types of happiness or kind of provides a different perspective of happiness. Do you have yeah. any specific examples? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that I, that I read recently. So I spoke to an author called Daniel Pink uh, a few weeks ago for a to kind of just interview him as part of the newsletter. And he's a social psychologist who wrote about a book recently called The Power of Regret. So it's all about this kind of emotion that he he believes is just, is very misunderstood. And if we could only, you know, utilize regret and use it, it could be very useful. And he talks about in the book about parenting, because he's a parent and his children are older, but he, he writes in the book that all the research says that when you are raising children... That first 20 years of raising kids, 20 years, 18 years, however long, it actually reduces what they call like day-to-day hedonic satisfaction and well-being. You know, it's like you can't just go around and do what you want all the time. It it makes life 
more difficult. It reduces this kind of hedonic satisfaction, which is a nice way of saying it. Out, out of 20,000 people, there were only, I think he's told me like 12 people that said that they regretted having children. It, it delivers happiness in a way that there's a meaning there, there's a purpose, there's a love there. And it's not to say that people who don't have kids are only approaching happiness hedonistically. It's not the case whatsoever. But when you have a kid, it just offers you a, a way that you kind of have to constantly tap into that long-term payoff of happiness as well. And I see it with my own kids all the time. I'll be talking to, the, to them about something over the course of a few weeks about like, hey, think about this or have you tried sharing better? You know, with a three-year-old, it's like, have you tried sharing better? And with a seven-year-old, it's like, hey, have you tried thinking about this and trying not to let that that bother you? And you you see it pay off. Not always, but when he gets further down the line, you're like, oh, great. That little thing that I was, I've been trying to help them with is like, is sinking in a little bit and it's happening. It's like, all right, okay, that's good. And for me, that's just like, oh gosh, that's a real happiness. And that's like a real kind of, very deep core happiness that is not connected to anything outside of what's happening. Lovely. We have this idea of, as you said, the kind of day-to-day difficulties that the life satisfaction goes down, but then it, I guess it will pick up, right? Because you have that payoff when you are standing and seeing your family, are you seeing your uh, children achieving amazing things in life? You think, yes, it was definitely yeah, you know. worth it. And, and, and I hear this from dads regularly. As they get older, you know, that will say like, oh, it's, it's much better now. Or it's like, you know, there's, we're getting, I get a lot more back. For the first six months of the baby's life, the, what a dad can do is a little limited in terms of, you know, being hands-on, breastfeeding, things like that, if, you, if you're doing it that way. And, but so then their role is at home is a little bit diminished versus the role of the mother, which is so important. But then as the child starts to get older, the opportunities for the father to be able to do more come around and the opportunity is to be able to like have more engagement with the child and so a lot of dads will say to me oh like now that she's won it's really it's a lot you know it's really great because this happens because the opportunities become more and more involved increase once you kind of like get over that initial newborn stage yeah because it is quite interesting isn't it because on one hand I think there is so much pressure on women and around kind of what type of mother uh, we supposed to be we, whether we supposed to be a mother it's almost kind of like expecting you are a woman therefore you will have children but then because of that on one hand lots of pressure on another hand it's almost like prescribed okay this is your role and it's almost a little bit more straightforward I guess that when you have children this is your role as a mother whereas I guess the fatherhood that's much more vague and there are different level of engagement for fa- from fathers that depending how much they are involved in early stages, depending on the situation. I think there's so many other factors that can really redefine that. So what is the new fatherhood that that we could be aiming for? Yeah, I mean, you kind of touch on it, what fatherhood means today. I think it's very different from any previous generation of dads that came before it, because I think it it was up until, I, I mean, the cutoff dates will differ depending on you, where you grew up and you, the kind of like conservative versus liberal nature of your own parents and everything like that. But, you know, the dads today are expected to be more and do a lot more than they were 30, 40 years ago. That's for sure. And to be more than just the kind of primary breadwinner, primary breadwinner, good dad kind of went hand in hand and the two of them often meant the same thing. To a world now where are dads who are staying at home now, we really we're asking the dads to step up. And I like that, you know, I think it's, a, and it's an exciting time, but of course it means that lots of men are trying to find the answers of a, of a question that their, their parents probably didn't, their dad probably didn't need to be thinking about. And that actually, if anything, their mum probably knows more about than their dad, because it's, you know, how do you be supportive at home, but, you know, return to work and still be successful at work at the same time. How do you be a very active parent, but not lose your sense of self? I don't think that's something that dads had to think about 40 years ago. I think it's something mums have been thinking about forever. The thing that I think about a lot is how this, how what dads are going through now echoes what mums have been going through for a very long time. 
What would you say we could all do to contribute to raising happy children? Whether we're having children, whether we are supporting people who have children, whether we are kind of in a family support network, how can we ensure that our future generation are ah, a happy generation? Because if they're not happy, then what is it else about? It's definitely, you're right, it's a job for everyone. You know, there's the, the old phrase of it takes a village to raise a kid is... It's so true. And that village used to be a lot of family as well. And because people don't always live near family so much anymore and, you know, friends become the family groups. So I think it's important for those people to be supportive. Advice is a very strange thing because, and parenting advice especially, because people can get offended by parenting advice. They can get offended when it comes from another parent. They can also get offended when it comes from someone who isn't a parent. I think it's on us to be able to take things in good faith when they're intended in good faith. And it's on others to maybe give a little bit more rope and a little bit more patience. And you, you said about nieces and nephews, it's like curiosity is something that we are born with. And it, it's so important to us when we're kids and we kind of lose it a bit as we get older. You know, if you're a, if you're a grown up and you're just being curious with a kid, curious about whatever they're reading, curious about what are they drawing, curious about, hey, what do you think about this thing? You know, if you're curious with a kid and can be curious together, it's a real, it's a real like way to, to lead to happiness because it helps you see the world in a, in a different way and helps you kind of be more in the moment. And those types of things never really lead to, to unhappiness, I found in my own experience. Mm, yeah, very interesting. So obviously curiosity and you're right. It's like curiosity is really something that connects us human at many different levels. So very nice that we're bringing it to the relationship with the kids, being curious and kind of exploring their point of view. Okay, Kevin, what makes you happy? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I... We live here in Barcelona. We really love our life here. It's really, it's really nice. We moved here in 2018. I worked at Google for almost 10 years. And then I left that job in 2018 because it wasn't making me happy. And when I originally got that job eight, nine years earlier, it, it, it made me happy. It really did. And then it, over the time, it didn't. So I kind of started to, you know, have to look outside of work. It's really like the, the city, like this city brings me a lot of happiness. You know, it's like the weather is nice. The culture is good here. It's like there's food, there's nice restaurants and there's the, there's a the beach and there's the mountains. And it's really like happiness for me is, you know, there's a little train. And I, if I have a, you know, an afternoon that I didn't have to be in too many meetings, I can just jump on the train and head up into the mountains and go for a little walk and then come back down to, you know, it's like a little two hour window. You know, that's 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 happiness that's being being able to do that and then being up there and kind of seeing the city from a different perspective wow lovely that's really that's really nice and yeah i've never been in barcelona definitely on my bucket list but i guess yeah finding those little spaces right when we can go away and just re rediscover our happiness so important i think you mentioned that you're having children lots of changes what would you say would be your personal kind of practical tip or what is your practical tip that you use quite often to kind of maintain your own happiness during maybe more difficult challenging moments when kids and I guess it's again it's important because I always see that you know if I'm not happy if my well-being is very down then it's very difficult to give give anything to others to give patience and kindness and compassion and that curiosity to other people if I'm in myself in a quite bad space so do you have any practical tips to kind of how we can maintain our own happiness on daily basis or how do you maintain your happiness on daily basis I, I do have a I do have a trick I have a, a trick that I use all the time there is a um like a writer and scholar of stoicism called William B Irvine and I listened to a talk of his a while ago, and he talked about this thing called the last time meditation. And he said, no matter what you're doing, there will come a time when it will be the last time that you will do this. If you approach things, like even things that you aren't enjoying, but if you approach things in life, like there's a potential that this could be the last time, you would be so able to kind of like deal with the stressful situation now. My son just turned three. Like, 
even you know like even changing nappies like i'm almost i'm i'm almost done with changing nappies and i'm not going i'm not going to say i'm going to regret i'm i'm not going to like miss changing nappies but there will come a t- like he won't need his nappy change anymore and it's like that's a big that's a big stage it's kind of like okay he's you know my him Bodhi now is he's, he's three and it's like you're not you're not a baby anymore you're like a tiny little man you know what i mean everybody picks their kid up for the last time and they never know it you know there's one last time that you pick your kid up so is that you know and i think you 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 go into life like that and it's very easy to find the joy and the stillness and the happiness in in little moments oh kevin thank you so much i think that is a wonderful inspirational very deep and profound i must say <laughs> it's not mine it's not mine it's, it's, it's very it's very profound from the I, i wrote about it a while ago on the news i wrote about it very early in the newsletter um, and so many people have sent me messages going gosh this really helped this was really good so um if it can help other people there you go yeah absolutely very profound so thank you so much for uh, for sharing that i think that's a wonderful thing to uh, to to finish the episode so thank you again for your perspective on kids and happiness fascinating episode with kevin all the parents or guardians my fall short on moment to moment happiness having kids can provide that source of long term additional meaning and purpose For me as a cool auntie, the two most practical aspects to try out to contribute to raise happy children is first of all curiosity. So bringing curiosity to the relationship with kids by being interested and curious about their thoughts and points of view. And secondly, the last time meditation. So really enjoying those ordinary moments we have with children by remembering that no matter what are we doing there will come a time when it will be the last time that we are doing it and especially that is so true when it comes to children because they are changing so quickly If you have enjoyed this episode, check out Ordinary and Happiness in series 1, episode 15, where we explore how to truly enjoy the ordinary moments in our life, especially when social media constantly reinforces the extraordinary. And see you next time for Love and Happiness, where I'll be diving into components of happy relationships. In meantime, as always, I dare you to be happy. Bye.